When striving for perfection, it's not the perfection that's important, but the striving. Genshin Impact is one of the best examples I've ever seen of that idea. I'm going to use game development as an analogy for self-actualization in order to highlight three things. How focusing on some things can hurt others, the benefit of staying true to your own identity, and the importance of external feedback. I find that discussing these things in the context of a video game makes the idea of progress over perfection tangible and realistic. Genshin's developer Mihoyo has built a solid foundation for the game. The scenery is gorgeous, the combat makes you feel powerful, and the campaign is engaging most of the time. Every playable character has a unique personality and playstyle. Unfortunately, Mihoyo is spread so thin keeping these things functional that other things kind of get left behind. And this brings us to the first point. Be careful what you sacrifice to focus on other things. It's like buying a house with broken heating. It can be as big and pretty as you like. You are going to be miserable come winter. But if it's a rundown shack that keeps you warm, at least you'll be comfortable while you work on getting your hands on some decor. One of Genshin's worst sacrifices is endgame content, which is meant to be a crucible for players to take on tough challenges for big rewards. Genshin's endgame is Spiral Abyss. It's an arena battle time trial with 12 levels of difficulty. The top four levels host a new array of enemies every four weeks, and the rewards reset every two weeks. Now for most players, completing all 12 floors is not realistic or worthwhile. The enemies aren't balanced well, they're not interesting to fight, and flawless completion of a level gives you 150 Prima Gems. To buy a wish, which is what you use to spin the wheel and try to get a character, that's 160 Prima Gems. It's not even enough for one wish. Branson Tomimatsu 2013 talks about the key parts of challenge in video games, most importantly evolution and reward. The challenge has to evolve in an exciting and organic way, and the reward for beating the challenge has to reflect the time and effort that gets put into it. Spiral Abyss fails both of these fronts. The rewards for every level are identical from 1 to 12, and the only change to the enemies is more health and more damage, which in my experience is the least engaging way to evolve a challenge. Mihoyo's attention goes elsewhere, and so Genshin's endgame is left unfinished and underwhelming. To put this in the context of self-actualization, we must be mindful of the parts of ourselves that we neglect as we grow, and make sure it's safe to let them stagnate for a bit before we can come back to them. I've seen many big-name games like Genshin stretch themselves thin trying to do too much. The devs either alienate players by not listening to their feedback, or they listen too much and diversify the game's content to try and please everyone, which ends up diluting the core identity of the game. It's that core identity that has to be protected above all else. Covanto 2013 discusses how indie games can see incredible success despite having significantly less resources than studio games. The main two reasons for this are their individuality and their freedom. Indie games tend to appeal to a niche audience because they have a unique identity and they stick to it. They don't have the resources not to. On top of that, because they don't have a bunch of business people breathing down their necks 24-7, they don't have to deal with the pressure that the big studios do. At its heart, Genshin Impact is a gacha game, which means it's built on the characters you work so hard to get. As the game has progressed, power creep has set in, which is when developers make new characters a little stronger than the old characters to try and make them more enticing for people to get their hands on. This then snowballs and snowballs until the old characters get completely forgotten. The relentless pressure of money-hungry executives and entitled community members has Mihoyo making new characters way better than old ones, which invalidates the old characters and upsets the players who've spent a lot of time and money on them. If Genshin focused on making unique and interesting characters rather than just overpowered ones, I'm certain players would be so much happier because their favourite characters have a way lower risk of being made obsolete with every new character that comes out. The impact of pursuing mass appeal also applies to people. Emmon2021 says that if we try and appeal to everyone, it's really bad for our mental and emotional states, and will attract toxic people. If we stay true to ourselves as we grow, we attract people who love us for who we really are, and shed people who want us to be someone we're not. And I know that through a lot of experience. Going back to characters, Genshin's character problems don't stop at their design. Leveling them up is a whole other story. So these are artifacts. Artifacts are pieces of stat boosting equipment. You give them to your characters, it makes them stronger. If you give a character two or four artifacts from the same set, they get an additional boost. 
unfortunately, getting artifacts from the dungeons is painfully randomised. By my math, the odds of getting artifacts that you're looking for with the right set, piece, main stat, and substat, it's less than 0.3%. That's depressing. And then you have to upgrade them. Artifacts have been a staple of player feedback for years. Cho and Zoe 2020 shows that feedback like this is the best way to learn about yourself. You can then make better informed decisions that would, in theory, improve the situation that you find yourself in. What's fascinating is that MiHoYo has taken this feedback and made these improvements to the artifact system in a completely different game called Honkai Star Rail. I'm glad the feedback's helping him improve, don't get me wrong, but improving a different game to the one that's getting you the feedback? It just doesn't sit right with me. So I talked about the importance of being aware of things that you're neglecting, and about how staying true to yourself is beneficial for your mental and emotional well-being, and how it attracts people that'll support you for who you are. External feedback is the last piece of the puzzle. It's an outside perspective that can enable you to make important steps on this road to self-actualization. It's like being given new furniture or appliances for the dream house. If these gifts reveal things that set you back a bit, like faulty wiring, or make you realise that you have a new vision, that's okay. Just make sure the heating works before you sell the house, so that anyone who's staying there or comes in afterwards doesn't get left in the cold. And make sure that whatever you do next is still what you want to do. Thank you for your time.